Hey guys, it's Kevin Kreider. <sighs> More than just muscle. I'm gonna be discussing the topic of Asian masculinity and my comments on JT Tran's blog that he wrote about the response of Natalie Tran's documentary that came out with white men with Asian women. And firstly, if you haven't watched that documentary or read the article, it's definitely worth reading and watching. Natalie goes through in depth with other academia and women about the responses of the hate that they get from Asian men, as well as the going through the journey of them discovering why it is and to understand and to better understand Asian men. But I also want to acknowledge JT for writing this article as well, because it is gold still. Even though I'm gonna make some disagreements, it is still gold and worth reading, but I wanted to add on and comment on some things that he wrote that I would like to disagree with or add on. And this is just open for discussion. The first thing I disagree with what JT said, and it's pretty early on, and he says, I want to challenge you to be an ally for Asian men first. I totally disagree with that because that is giving the power away that Asian men have right now, which is yourself, ourselves, each other. I don't think we should give the responsibility to something other than ourselves. That is basically saying like you're in a bad relationship, but you, you're waiting for the other person to change first and accept you for all the stuff. And it just doesn't work that way because if we just keep waiting around for the other person to change and to be our ally first, nothing's going to happen. I think it starts with us first. We need to empower ourselves first. We need to make ourselves better. And we can't ignore this subject anymore, guys. I see way too many Asian men ignoring the subject because they're thinking, oh, well, it doesn't really affect our lives that much. Bullshit it does. Ignoring it does not get rid of the problem. If you're going to the doctor, and your doctor says you have cancer. Ignoring it is not going to solve the problem. It's only gonna get worse. And so by Asian women extending this olive branch to us, it will allow us to heal and help us help you too. I also disagree with that too, because like I said in the beginning, we need to really heal ourselves first. And I think the first step for us to do that is to forgive the Asian women. Like truly just forgive them because they were going through the same shit that we were when we were growing up, which is the desire to fit in, the desire to be light. We have to understand that and we have to forgive them for their insecurities too. Because women have insecurities just like men. And if we don't recognize that, that they were just doing what they thought was right at the time, which is strip away their Asian identity so they could fit in. And some women still do that, but we have to forgive them because they're flawed, just like us. They have insecurities. So I don't think it starts with them and they're allowed their opinions. They might be shitty opinions, but they're allowed them. And I think we need to give room and space for them to have their own opinions and hurt as well. But I also like to say that Asian men, we need to gather and be around each other so we can share from the heart and to share our pains and struggles with each other. Because I don't think we allow ourselves to be vulnerable enough to even do that with each other first. I think too many of us depend on another woman to understand and make us feel better and confident about ourselves. And I learned the hard way, no woman, no amount of women are gonna make you feel more confident about yourself. You have to make yourself feel confident about yourself. But how do you do that? You have to do esteemable acts. And what JT does, which is help other Asian men feel good and confident about themselves, that's esteemable acts. And you could see it in him. Asian men were allowed to define our own masculinity and what it means to be an Asian man. But we aren't allowed that right. Instead, we have both mainstream society and it, Asian women policing our masculinity and telling us what it means to be an Asian man. Asian men in the past, like myself, we didn't feel like we had a voice. We didn't feel like we could speak up. We didn't feel like it would be heard. And now it's being heard. And now we have a voice and now we're redefining it. And it's, it's people, it's Asian men's responsibility to redefine what we believe Asian masculinity is for us. And we have to be the example then and then it'll start to change. It's more about just being the change you wanna see in the world. 
being that change first and then the rest of it will follow and to just keep carrying that message and then when he says understand us and understand our need to be different than white men because we just are. Asian women need to understand themselves first. What makes them tick? Why they only date white men? Why they feel like Asian men are inferior? I think that's probably their first step more than anything. It's not ours to make them understand us. Oh, and this one's gonna piss a lot of people off probably. And he says Asian men have to constantly fend off physical and verbal aggression from white men that you as an Asian woman may not see. There's this stereotype that Asian men are weak physically, uh, not athletic, they aren't masculine because they're super skinny or... Mm. On a scale of one to 10 of masculinity and feminine being one, I'd say maybe three. That's not you, is it? No, it's not me. Not sexy. Why do they all have long hair? A, a busy couple of years, you know, and, and, and the whole Thor thing, you know, kind of kicked it off and... You can just name a bunch, right? That's why I got into health and fitness. That's why I got into athletics. I did a lot to fend that off. And guess what? It worked. The same people making fun of me started to really respect me. I get it, I know I won the lottery when it comes to the genetics, when it comes to height, when it comes to my physicality, but I worked my ass off for it too. I made my mistakes. And the thing is though, it kind of is like a shield a little bit, you know? Um, look, I'm not gonna deny it. Our first response to someone is the physical appearance because you can work on that. You can totally improve that. I do think a lot more Asian guys need to get into fitness a little bit more. And I'm not trying to say they need to be bodybuilders and physique athletes, but the thing is there's something about performing well in the gym that just literally exudes confidence outside in the real, real world because nothing is better than having control of your body, having control of your mind, and your mind and body connected. There's, there's just no denying it. The endorphins, the... I invite you to get more into it, get more active that way, because I'm telling you, there's just something that changes when you get into that kind of stuff. And, I mean, look at Bruce Lee. He's one of the most athletic guys. He exuded confidence. Men, black, white, whatever, all, they all respect Bruce Lee. It's part of finding our identity as Asian masculinity. I also want to add into that that it's a part of finding our confidence, building our self-esteem, and we fuck up. We just do once in a while. And I want to flip the script and say that's what Asian women do. And I want Asian men to understand that too, that what Asian women are doing to Asian men is them trying to find what it's part of their identity as an Asian American woman. And they are going through it just like we are. And I think we need, like I said, it goes back to the forgiveness part, and I'm not trying to get all biblical on you, but forgiveness really is the key to this, guys. We're gonna mess up, and it's gonna get ugly. It's gonna get sloppy for a little while. I think we need to get used to this, but like I said, we now have this voice, so it goes one way. We weren't heard for a while, so we felt like this. Now we feel like this, and it's gonna start going out like a seesaw and we just we both need to find that balance for ourselves and then the rest of it i totally get what jt is saying and i think it's a great article to read it brought up a lot of emotions for me which compelled me to do this vlog so that's why i think it's actually a good thing that he wrote this i wouldn't take it back and i think this is progression it's not going to be perfect obviously i think we're still all finding our own way and this is a good step Look, we're aware of the situation now, but then what are we gonna do with that? Are we going to keep hating on each other? I get their insecurities. I get it, I have my own. And I, right or wrong, I chose a way to do it. And right or wrong, I now choose an ulterior way of doing it that's not gonna hurt other people. At least I don't wanna hurt other people. And that's the thing, I, I believe the changes that we make, as long as they don't hurt other people, it's for the better good. That's why I've gotten so involved with the Asian American communities lately, because I realized the more I get involved in that, the more we can be heard, and uh, the more your voice can be heard, and, and the more you start to feel a part of something. 
you really start to feel a part of something and you don't feel isolated from everything and that is something we need to do more of and as men as Asian men we need to be okay with accepting help from others all right that's all I got guys subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you guys soon